55 minutes all done, ready to kick this one off. <laughs> yeah, it's about it's, it's close enough to five minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Take it away, Brandon. You guys first two items. Yeah, hopefully these are quick. Um, but I just wanted to throw two out there, just get some attention on them and make sure that I'm not completely out of left field with what I was thinking here. Um, one was on the artifacts one, we had the PR out here asking to archive it, and I was a little confused by that. And so I wasn't sure, is there something I don't understand going on? Should we uh, be using this at all, or is this a little premature? I should go ahead and uh, apologize for being, um, I was doing aggressive uh, grooming of OCI yesterday, and there was a number of projects. So I'm, in general, I think there's a discussion that probably needs to be had. I'm super confused by the status of this project. I thought that there was a disagreement about it, and that's why um, the work is being done in the Oris one. Uh, but maybe Steve could, you know, explain it the way that he sees it. But I, I you know, I didn't mean to cause any issues with this or confusion. But I, like I put here, like I'm. Also very, very confused what's going on. So this no, that's is- cool. It's fair. It's fair. Yeah, the, uh, it, it's not going to weigh the, the, we just need, we got a little bit of a pause in, 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 you know, in, in finishing it up until we've decided if we need a manifest or not. And we've got work groups that are going, getting together to make that decision. Is there a place that that state could be surfaced for i mean for josh but also for for the next josh that shows up and says oh artifacts um, yeah the, the, artifacts. the readme is a good place let's just change this pr to a you know a link to some efforts that are underway the work groups as well as the uh, the ORES effort i think would be fair to link to um, yeah. and also a couple other places the the potential prs um the reference one that was done in image spec as well as um linking probably to uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, you know Justin's uh, pull request. I think it was twenty nine or something, uh, or maybe uh, another number in in this in this repo. With, yeah, I mean, I think in general, when when a person is confused, it is the documentation's fault, right? Uh, so if if Josh, who is even a person who's who's relatively plugged into the effort and knows you know knows us and talks to us sometimes, if he's confused, then like some rando off the street is going to be extra confused. So more documentation would be great. Agreed. I guess I support documentation. It's helpful. I Sometimes it can be more confusing. So I just, rather than spawn this out to several different things, the, like, if you look at what's in this repo now, it's strictly, here's the guidance on how to use the existing manifest that is in production people can use today. Like it's, you know, as released as anything could be because that was the whole debate. Is this a spec or is it a uh, reference implementation, not reference, uh, a discussion on how you can use a prescriptive architecture for how you use the existing manifest to meet a goal. The additional, what the only reason that 29 and what now is in Aura's artifacts is not in here was we didn't have an agreement that this could be promoted to a spec. That's the working group discussion. Um, the outcome of that working group is TBD, right? It could be uh, it could be specs that go into this one. It could be a merger with the distribution spec. Like, we don't know yet. So, I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if we should be adding more links to things that aren't closed, as opposed to. It needs a status section in the doc in the readme. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think just at the beginning, like Jason's saying, like, just, hey, like, actually, the progress is going on over here. Maybe it'll come back into this. Like, is that the idea that you'll work without being uh, pushed back upon in the Oris one and then get it back into here as a stable thing? Like, is that what the working group here is the question? Like, we don't know if it should go in. Like, I, when the artifacts repo was created, it was because we couldn't get agreement to make changes to distribution or image. So that was the concession. I don't know what the output of the working group is. Like I, I have 
you know, an opinion, but that's the point of the working group. So I think that context is useful to share with people who find this repo, right? Like, like this exists because we tried to do this. We are the current state of it is it's being discussed here and here by these groups, like, you know, see this issue for the latest for the latest discussion. I think, uh, 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 like I said, Josh, Josh is a person who is relatively plugged into this stuff. And if he doesn't know what the latest status is, then some, then some person who saw a, a presentation about artifacts and wants to get involved will have no, no help. Like, where do they do it? Do they do it in this repo? Do they do it in ORS artifacts? I just, I'm just trying to give people breadcrumbs to find where the current discussion is happening. That's all. Because it's it's currently happening in issues and PRs and in three or four different repos. I mean, I'm happy to do that. I you know we're happy to make changes to this. I was trying to not add more complexity to it. Quite honestly, of you know, is this a fork? It's not a fork. It's not that it moved. You know, this is on the and maybe that's the words we can put there. If the group is okay with that, that's great. I, considering all of the contention that's happened around this, I was trying to. I was kind of surprised and not looking to create more bike shedding on various debates and let's just let the working group evolve and, and go from there well if you're not interested in bike shedding i think you might be in the wrong group uh but but i think like uh the discussion of specific wording by all means a pr is perfect for that uh but i think i think i agree with josh whether he meant to say this or not that the current state is confusing and some text somewhere saying what the current state is even if it is like Go look over here for the latest status. Uh, that would be fine. And that and that was really the purpose of of the PR. It's just like I thought the up to date thing was there, um, and so it was simply when people landed this because they're coming from someone's blog post or Twitter that they would then be redirected to the Oris one where the you know. Um, anyway. I'm sorry, didn't, I should have reached out to, you know, Mike and Steve and got more clarification. I was just like, I think really it was a fair point yesterday. to bring up. No, I, I, it's, okay. a, it's a, it's a, it's like, like Jason said, if, if, if any, if there's confusion amongst us with the status of, or like where, where that discussion is or otherwise, then you could expect others to be more confused, so. Okay, can I just suggest we close this one because we're not trying to archive it and we'll open up another one that, that has- I think it is, oh yeah. Well, there was a couple, I literally just, Mike mentioned something to me the other day about this and it, it didn't click that it was actually a, a thing like in, in the repos. So if we can close this one and then we'll open up a PR. I, we can, yeah, we I can, can go ahead. It, I'll, or, or rename it, whatever. It's all good either way. I'll put a I'll put a nice comment in here uh, right now. That's like this is we need some more direction for people. I'll reopen it when we're clear on that. And I think we don't actually even have a link for a working group yet, right? That's soon. We can we can link to the the ones that are in progress. Okay. In the uh, top. I'll. Uh, yeah, I'll oh, close this, but it. let's. I'll, yeah, don't worry. Steve, Steve and I will we'll push an update to the readme to indicate stuff. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Sorry. Hope and and, uh, and, and we've moved from time. master to main. So thanks for the reminder on that. Well, that's a good one. <clears throat> Hopefully, I didn't open up too big of a can of worms on that one. I just wanted to. I, I was confused, so I wanted to clarify that one. No, it was good to see. Like I, once I saw it in the agenda, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> So. Yeah, there's there's blood on your hands, Brandon. Yeah, there is. This one. Um, don't don't just, shoot! Don't shoot! <laughs> I'm just raising the visibility on this one because I think it's come up a few times of people discussing different ways that we can possibly have backward compatibility with artifacts today. You know, differentiating between what's going on with the artifact spec work over in Oris with potentially if we need to support older registries. I, I think we keep bringing it up over and over again. That would be nice if there was a way that we could say update this thing in a registry, but only if it's what I thought it was so that we can avoid potential race conditions. So exactly. I, and that's the kind of guidance that yeah. this, this repo is supposed to have in it. So we need to fix that. Yeah. So. I, think, I think it's especially useful to frame it not in terms of any specific type of thing being racially created or updated, but like regular images have this bug. Regular indexes have this bug, right? Like 
Yeah. I think I think we can easily fall down a rabbit hole if we talk about specific use cases where there's more more than likely to happen. But yeah, regular regular images from 2017 have this problem, and registries should do better at solving it. So plus one, plus two, even I'll give you plus two. Sorry. Sorry. How do we steps on this? Can you hear me? I, yes. I hate Zoom. Um, how do we implement this on S3? I'm not sure. Okay. I, I'm not the original author on this one. Um, I don't know. If well, John, John did, but I, it's mostly just in, in respecting various HTTP pieces. Right, but but S three has no has like correct right. none of that. <laughs> it's like a, a key value yeah, because a lot of this, a lot of yeah. this is I mean because in the past when we've talked about doing like static static registries where you could like just save a static tree and be able to fetch it. Um, the, these kind of these kind of like basically requiring some kind of server interaction things is what was always the, the tit for tat on whether or not we should support a fully static registry like an S3 or otherwise. When you say a static um, registry, do you mean uh, do you mean a registry that does not accept pushes? Yeah. In that case, then e tags don't matter, right? Because you can't you can't write to have a read modify write problem. You can't write, so problem solved. Yay. <laughs> we did it. We did it, everyone. We solved the problem. Uh, but, but, but I think to push I think the S3, you'd have to have an intermediary anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just used to having a front end on top of S3 and not talking to S3 directly as a back end registry. So, well, I yeah, we, we all do. It's called distribution. Uh, but like distribution so has got to be something. So, this would be distribution supporting it, and distribution would. Do that to keep track of those, keep track of the e tags that it's referencing any three hundred twos or otherwise. But well, so yeah, I mean the the, the, the e, e tags is the digest, right? Exactly. The e tags can be derived. It's really doing the CAS operation, compare yeah, and swap, so. not content address storage, right? Yes, John's CAS, not your CAS. <laughs> so, so what would you be looking for? What I guess. If something, if if in the push use case you already have something on top of that, what are you looking for from S three then, or like how how S three? Uh, basically, I'm saying that this spec is impossible to implement on top of S three, and as far as I know, the S three backend is the most popular backend for distribution. Um, and I would really like some just because you'd have just because you'd have more than one front end fronting the same S three bucket. If you have more than one distribution node, uh, you can't do a read, modify, that's write cool. operation that's consistent. So would that be a case that you would just not set this header? Yeah, but like let's say that you try. Um, I, I just think you can easily get into an awkward situation where like clients are not necessarily going to do like a negotiation. Uh, to see if this header exists and like this is a lot of complexity. Uh, alternatively, I would love to see someone actually get distribution to implement this using like there are clever ways by using side channels and registry or distribution has historically supported uh, caches on the side. Um, in other databases that use EC, I've seen people build consistency systems that are external to them. I would kind of love to see someone prototype a metadata store on top of or next to distribution just to see how complicated it would be to implement this on top of S3. So I think I think this proposal would actually help motivate that work in distribution, right? Like like we're not if this if this gets merged, it's not saying the distribution is bad. It's saying here is a, a recommendation, an OCI recommendation that it, that distribution does not currently satisfy. It's just a recommendation. Uh, and because it's an unsatisfied recommendation, now somebody can say, oh, I would like to satisfy that recommendation and go do that, however, distribution. I don't know anything about how hard that is. I don't know if that's but, fundamentally easy, medium, hard, but. Right, uh, right. so I'm suggesting that like maybe we prototype it first, or maybe someone prototypes it first, just to see like, if it turns out to be an insanely large amount of work, 
maybe we should think about some different ways to do this. I think it is supported by a number of registries. I, maybe maybe it is mentioned already in the in the issue, but is this behavior already supported by a number of registries in the wild? I know that e-tags are not like new technology, so I wouldn't be surprised if a registry did, but I also don't know if they all do or if none do. I take your point though that, that it's worth it's worth um thinking about how hard this is for a registry to implement because like the I way mean, that i see this playing out is that like our developers are going to love this and our users are going to love this and then as registry developers and operators we're just going to be like oh no what do we do now well i don't think these things exist for the benefit of registry operators i think they exist for the benefit of users right R right which is why i'm suggesting that someone spend a little bit of time thinking about how something like distribution might implement this um yeah is there anybody uh either here or uh who knows someone in distribution land that would be willing to scope out not like necessarily build it but like give an estimate of easy medium hard uh on this, I mean, you, you you seem to have some knowledge of how uh, distribution in S three works, so you are already infinitely better than me because I have no idea of either. But uh, I don't know. At this, it's the same chicken and egg problem of like if the spec doesn't have some trajectory sort towards suggesting it or recommending it or requiring it, then nobody's going to do the work. And if nobody does the work, if nobody doing the work is a blocker on it being proposed in the spec, then we're a chicken and egg. Right. I mean, yeah, we've talked about like, I feel like this has come up a number of times in this group where it's like, hey, propose a spec. What would the implementation of the spec look like? But the implementation yeah. takes a long time. If there's no chance the spec will get merged, let's not do it. In right. this case, I don't actually think that it's a, a ton of work. I think someone just needs to propose what the semantics would be. So like a least based semantic would be something that would be very um, realistic, I guess um the the benefit of of this of e-tags and this proposal is that they are not prescriptive about how the e-tags work right like like distribution could solve it completely differently than you know my registry or brandon's registry or whatever like just saying e-tags should be used i think is not a is not a, a an onerous thing for any registry. I get I get that it, it's worth like looking into how hard it would be practically inside distribution, but I don't know. As soon as I saw this, I was like, I can't believe the spec didn't already say you should use e tags. I mean, uh, ignoring e tags, I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is the backend store doesn't support consistent operations, so you need the, to build the mechanism on top of the backend store to support them. A backend store of one registry implementation. Uh, Azure, Azure, SCS, no, like what are there? This is, this is a yeah. problem if you have multiple, multiple instances of distribution backed by the same S3. If you've only got one instance of distribution sitting out there, you're only talking to that one thing. You're not going to have multiple writers in that case. Then you wouldn't have that. Problem. If you have one server, but like if you want HA, you need two servers. Yeah. So that, that's where the challenge is going to be implementing it. Um, so that's kind of where I phrase it of what are the next steps for this. And so if we're saying from the OCI side that we'd like to see somebody from distribution take a shot at implementing that, and that's what we're held up on, then that gives us some direction. This should come as a proposal because, um, and I think a reference implementation needs to show that this is already supported in some place. We've asked that of every request that's come through, right? So why would we not kind of like, make this as a proposal for 1.1 of distribution spec and take it that way? Like I know that uh, Quay supports this, but Quay also requires like a, a, a SQL database, right? And like that has some complications around availability. Um, so it'd be nice to be able to have a story around how could, are, are there any, registries that implement this without sacrificing availability a ton. And is that availability on only writes or is that availability also on reads? Yes, in the K case.
All right, so I think I've got the two answers I was looking at for that one. I think that takes it to Sargon with a uh, new release. Yeah, so I, I have no idea how this works and I could not find any documentation about like what the process is and so on. Good question. Uh, it was the, it's, it's effectively, it's been the same process as the other specs that are, do have some documentation in a few different places. It might not be actually all in the same. It, if, if you looked at runtime spec, it would probably have it. And then distribution spec was the first um, release that somebody besides myself actually went through the whole spec release process. Um, so Josh did that for the 1.0. And if there's any improvements, otherwise, like just copying or carrying over the release process to like a release.md in the distribution spec, we need to do that. Open up. <coughs> Is there a concept of a pre-release? Yeah, we've we've done well. We did RCs before the 1.0. Yes, I've seen those. Yeah, and even with the other ones having a you know 1.01 or whatever that followed up, we did not really do an RC. We could have, but we just didn't. Um, I imagine if we did anything like a 1.1, we probably go into the RC cycles. I'm not opposed to having something like a pre-release or RC or even about a patch, patch release. And I guess, but, is there any preferred cadence for these releases? Go with the open source solution of when it's ready. Is it ever ready? Good enough. Okay, that answers my questions. Okay, sorry, I had some notes going on. I didn't unmute. So I just pasted in the notes under distribution spec release the link to the runtime spec releases.md, which is what I've used in the past. Um, but the big things are, besides just like the tedious cleanup nonsense that we did, it's just like sending. Um, typically, we would actually create a milestone for the things that we were tracking that we wanted to get into that release. So if we're thinking about a 1.01, we should we can go ahead and create a milestone for that. That's low, low, low barrier. Put the things on that GitHub milestone. Um, then once we've done it, then it's basically just sending out an email to the list. Um, well, sending an email out, effectively trying to get all the maintainers CC on it, but also CC the list. Um, and it has a timed voting period and then it's merged in. So there's typically a little bit of a song and dance of putting up a PR so that people can see what would be tagged as, oh, you know, dot next, and then having a vote that the maintainers, uh, LGTM on the list. And then it obviously then also requires a couple of LGTMs on the PR and it merges. And the PR that's in, in that is usually like one that bumps the actual version in some file and then, then bumps it back into like dev. So it's always dev and, and trunk. Um, but still in that PR is the one that's tagged, actually like get signed, tagged and signed is the release. Sorry. Okay, Steve, what? 
Yeah, I, was just, I mean, I, I watched the video from the meeting that was out a week on vacation on the extension API, and you know, this the, kind of came into the conversation of can we get something in not the merge spec, like there's not release specs. What's in main is like the work in progress, and what's there is hey, this is what we're working on, but until a release is cut, it might change. Like until we have enough confidence that this will work. That, you know, will it work across, you know, is that for that example one, but it could be any one of these topics for the thing that Sargon promoted, uh, uh, proposed a couple of weeks ago. Um, I mean, we, it seems like we need some way to have something that's a work in flight. Here's the current status. It may change. And until a release is cut, it's not finalized. But at least it represents some amount of confidence that this is where we're currently at. So are you saying just like nuances, are we saying that we'd work in like a dev branch uh, and the default branch is like whatever the most recent release is or otherwise? I mean, I guess, I guess that's the question. Like we went through this with the notary project. We were working in a prototype branch, for instance, and that just confused the hell out of people. So the feedback we got was, main is the work in progress and then there's releases for what's done so for instance sargon's um uh what was the thing the deduping um i think that got merged into main it's not released yet it's a place for people to reference do the implementation i think we're i think we're pretty confident about how that's in that it probably won't change but you know as others try to implement it maybe it will as the referrers API, not the referrers, sorry, the extension API goes in to enable things like the referrers API or other extensions that um, uh, others might want to do. Until they start working on it, they can point at something, which in theory is a main, um, is no way to know if it's done. So maybe main needs a header that says, by the way, this main is a work in progress. If you want the stable things, Here's release one, here's release X, and you put pointers to it. I think just furthering on that, uh, there is a conformance test that was added. And because our conformance tests are tied to our releases and the conformance test was testing pre-existing behavior, it kind of adds a yet another layer of complexity uh, to this discussion. So if we want to say cut a you know 101 with one of the conformance tests, um, do we do that? Do we say that this conformance test is going to make it to the next release, and you know the associated features are likely to make it? Like, how do we kind of track this? And you know, I would love to see that conformance test start to becoming tested against registries in the wild because. I know they're non-conform registries. Um, so there's that would, there's that complexity too. That would follow Simver if we said a 101 is just a bug fix on the 10 release. And so people should be, if you're saying you're 10 conformant, you should be 101 conformant. Is that documented somewhere? I agree with you, but is that something a rando off the street would understand by looking at our documentation? I feel like I'm a rando off the street, but yeah, it probably should be documented. <laughs> You're so much more than that to me, Brandon. I think the, the 101 question, does that then also apply to 1.1? One one? Because- um, Yeah, that's what I'm sitting here thinking. Of like, Because one of the things that it came up in the past and we said, let's just stick to get tags for now, like main, and then tags and not actually get into get branching because a we didn't want to fit you know like kind of maintaining branches and merging back and whatnot but for some of those performance tests to be able to say like whatever this this moving target is is always v1 and then it could be v1.1 or whatever and then you have like increased amount of cherry picking and merging but um to have something like a moving target so that um but for now, it's just a, a get tag strategy. Um, but as far as conformance tests, 
tests being able to reference, like the latest in V1, the latest in V1.1 or whatever, Simber kind of stuff. And right now that would be wire, wiring that up to point to Git tags. So yes, I think people should be using the conformance test. How best to have a recommendation on what um, um, how best to attack uh, attack that and make sure that it like is consistent or otherwise, and even like for like slating issues that we want to discuss and get it in, you know, it's all in the main or whatever. Um, so I, um, go ahead, Vince. No, I'm. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that loud. You talk. It'd be more for here. <laughs> no. Uh, so, Sargon, the conformance test binary should be released with the tag. If it's not, we should uh, fix that. And then there's also an image in GitHub's registry that should be tagged with the release. So, my thoughts are that you could run the, the tests locked in that version. And you would say I'm a 1.0 compliant, and then when one one comes out, it's a whole new binary that's locked. Let me make sure that's there. But yeah. But if there's language in 1.0 that there wasn't a conformance test for, should we then release a 101 and say all yeah? I would think 101. I would think 101. Yeah. Okay. And then to the question of what, what happens with 1.1, I think that's when you have the new feature. Doesn't necessarily have to, it's not a breaking change, it's just a new feature. And then start adding tests on that. So if I'm just to recap, our version of Semver is uh, Z increments are clarifications and additions to the conformance test to check all previous Y releases against those conformance tests. Increments of the Y release may add new features where the future version of the tests will validate. Previous versions may not. Yeah, I always look at the last one. And, and in between, just yes, reference yes. Commit. The accounting term is current and perspective, not retroactive. <laughs> Current perspective is you're saying see, previous like, versions of the test might not might not be able to test for those things, but the current conformance test and otherwise and future versions would be able to test on it. Right. And I would include those bug fixes, you know, just typos in the spec, things like that. There's all kinds of stuff people want to put out there and fix. So how do we get the conformance test released as 101? We just need to tag. We just need to, uh, maintainers of the repo just need to talk. And, and, and someone needs to like play, you know, get cherry picking and, you know. If necessary, we'll take a look. I don't think anything was in a, required a 1.1 release. I'm pretty sure the changes were all 01 type thing. So cool. we'll, we'll get to it. <laughs> if, you, if you want to open an issue, that, that's fair. If you haven't already. I don't know if we need to use what Run C is doing, which is you know more of a, a quarterly or whatnot cycle to, to grab up what the current one is. If you think that's like there's there's not even a release tag on SCI conformance group. Okay. So it's it's just an image and and a commit number. If that topic is done, the next one I had, oh, I don't know if it is done. Is, is this topic done? <laughs> I don't want to cut anybody off. Uh, the next one is mine, which was I mainly just a FYI, in case people didn't see the reference types uh, working group proposal was updated. Take a look, I don't know, or if people want to discuss further. Uh, but I'm not sure that that was uh, communicated uh, 
like I didn't see in the Slack, but if you are interested in that proposal, go take a look. Is the reference type proposal or the sorry, the working group proposal ready for TOB votes or are we expecting for additional revisions before? A good question to which I don't know the answer or even I don't also know if that was a question to me. Yeah, so I, yeah, I think we're effectively ready for TOB vote. Uh, I think there was a um, call for one more participant that Lackey put in that um, in that issue. But other than that, I think the text of it and what's being proposed is is basically it's time you know for a TOB vote approval. Exciting. That's all I had. I just wanted to bring it to people's attention and having now brought it to your attention, we can proceed. Yeah, that's a good point that if you're not following that, you might have missed it. So maybe we'll just send a quick note to the dev list. So make sure people see that. Thanks. Especially if it's ready for, for TOB votes or as it becomes ready for TOB votes. Uh, yeah. Yep. The next thing was content encoding. I think that was Sargon, I think. Yeah. Uh, I see the next one is interesting KubeCon conversations. Oh, I moved that below yours because yours is actually technically related to things. And I just wanted to. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna reopen this wound. Um, oh, good. Yeah, I, I don't know if people were familiar with this issue from a while ago, but there was an issue, but you know. Uh, uh, proposal, but there was a discussion around adding content encoding and accept encoding support to the registry uh, or to the distribution spec, excuse me, um, rather than using our own um, media types and media type uh, uh, based um, uh, negotiation. Um, so I just wanted to see if the proposal was clear on what accept encoding meant exactly. And if it was clear, then does it make sense to go do the dance of building a prototype of what it might look like? And just to refresh everyone's memory, the, the, basically the only thing here is when a client does a pull of a blob, they say they accept encoding identity, gzip, xz, blah, blah, blah. And we then uh, serve up their preferred encoding. And 99 point whatever percent of the time until people start moving off of char gz, that will be uh, identity encoding. So is it is this like, would you say, was this a transitional first step so that you could potentially stop even having compressed images across the, uh, like the thing that the identity and digest is calculated on being with any compression associated with it? Right. So that you could on the fly do Z stud or XZ or whatever across the wire, and then identities move more towards just uncompressed. Right, and you could even do stuff. So there's a second part of the proposal which uh, I've decided to split off from the first part. But you could upload a tarball that's not compressed with the digest of the tarball that's not compressed with an encoding of uh, gzip. And uh, you would verify the digest on the uncompressed form, upload the compressed form. And then when people go to download that blob, they only have the permission to download the blob with the encoding of, of uh, uh, GZ, let's say. That, that would be one, one route we could go down. 
Well, that's a neat part of, part of that. So um, I'm all in favor for this. I've, I've despised the fact that compression was tangled up in our identity, lava identities for years. Um, and especially that it's inconsistent across places. That prototype sounds a little tricky because there were brief fleeting moments that different compressions actually had vulnerabilities in the decompression piece of it. So binding that up with the client to have to do that decompression just to attest the identity of it without just doing like a straight opaque digest like checksum is a little challenging in certain, it raises certain security flags, but it's a fine prototype or, you know, kind of a demo. But on the whole, storing storing and having identity based on an uncompressed blob and then finding other ways to like say, you know, here's here it is also if it's XZ or Z stood or whatever, is it like ways that you could actually present it or point to it or even move it across the wire, the type, types of compression, um, I think is, is useful and neat uh, and needed. So are you talking about where people are building like zip bombs or are you talking about where people are building incredibly large documents um, because the content length can't be calculated, calculated mm -hmm. ahead of time? No, uh, it, there, there was, it was more actually just got down to that, that issue that happened right around the time that we were arguing this and it kind of put the nail in the coffin and I'd have to go actually do some archive spelunking. I think it was LZMA early XZ had an issue where all client implementations actually had like a memory buffer, like overflow, just in trying to read through. And so just in trying to get to check some of the uncompressed bits, you'd have to run through, you'd have, you'd have to do processing to jump through to get a digest. And it could potentially have like a buffer overflow and like partic particular vectors. And it was in the client implementation, it was quickly and easily fixed, but it kind of like, put a nail in a coffin in a conversation that needed to continue five years ago. Right. Okay. So then, it, yeah. Um, basically, anything that needs a digest should be so opaque that you could do it with command line tools, not either like, like SHA-1 sum this object, not having to do processing to get that digest. Um, so. Cool. I can yeah, make my Jason, next. You hand up. You oh, sorry. Hand up. You may have answered my question, but I'm stu too stupid to realize it. Uh, I have, and, and apologies also if this has been litigated and answered before. Uh, uh, the size, the size that would be returned is the uh, uncompressed size, right? Like, like I, I get a size and a digest. The HTTP content length is what we're asking. Uh, 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 not exactly. So I see, I see an image and it says layer one or layer zero is digest ABC size a thousand bytes. And I say, oh, I can, I can process a thousand bytes. That's easy. I'll go fetch that digest descriptor size. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, then I go request that zipped. I say, I, yeah, I don't want to, a thousand bytes is actually too much for me. I'd rather uh, fetch less than that and then decompress it on my size. On my side, uh, I am doing a lot of trusting that that in, that that size isn't going to actually be bigger or even way bigger. Like the 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 descriptor size is there to prevent me from to to let me put a cap on how many bytes I'm going to pull over the wire, right? And if the compression used is really bad uh it could be way more than the thousand bytes of the uncompressed size in theory you would get information in the http header saying the size of the compressed size right and then the descriptor size would be the uncompressed size okay so you could allocate the larger of two buffers and then decompress in place or something similar to that and so so or, okay so i'm still guarded because i could say uh, I'm fine downloading a thousand bytes, and then I find out from the content length, length header that it's actually two thousand bytes, and that's too rich for my blood. I'm not going to try to download it anyway, right? Right. Okay. But in that process, I have walked away from a transaction and made the server 
do the compression for me. Uh, so I hope that no one implements this by doing compression on the fly. Sure. I sure, hope sure. the way that this works is that when people do Docker push and we do the multi-part blob assembly, at that point, we would do the compression and output the eight different compressed formats that are supported. Gotcha. I would hate for people to actually do on the fly compression on serve time. I will for fun, but I take your point. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that was, that was where we got to in the past was actually um, almost like what I did with the crazy tar split project was going down the, the, all the different ways that Diffie Hellman windows are calculated for all the different GZIP implementations to see if we could like re read and calculate enough to reassemble whatever GZIP they used in whichever optimizations, whether it was Golang or BSD or otherwise, um, so that we could do that on the fly in the past. It was really maddening. So it's possible, it's academic, but it's not, there's no profit in that. Steve? One of the things we talked about at the offsite was uh, the OCI summit was, and it just it, it triggered my idea. The, the digest thing is: Do we have somebody that's going to experiment on the five twelve uh, digest to see when that crisis happens, how bad it is across all registries? What do you mean crisis? Like, just the length of the string, or the no? The like SHA five SHA two fifty six might get broken tomorrow, and if it does, OCI falls apart. I mean, everything falls apart, but one of the many things that falls apart is OCI. I don't think, Steve, to answer your question, I think uh, I, I was the one that talked about that at the summit, and I think everyone just sort of shuddered quietly to themselves, and we agreed we should do something about this, but. Yeah, they, yeah that's they, what I'm asking. There'd be, a massive, there'd be a massive recalculation. I, 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 there's some parts of me that wish that we could do some kind of multi, multi hash, but um, basically there's been work done on, on this and prototyping and like, Everybody is familiar with the fact that you can change those things. And it, as long as you're doing it for yourself and it won't break anything, it's the fact that we trust stuff that other people have built that might not get rebuilt, um, it would break. Uh, even Sargon on the call has already like pushed out a lot of work on the Blake to be. Uh, and otherwise, um, as that one's gotten vetted. Um, but, yeah, are you, are you just saying like computationally what it would look like for for people to validate it? Or I I guess my takeaway from the conversation was we'd spin up you know a group that would start experiments like here's a conformance test here's something that you know somebody could start running on their various registries to see like what happens. I mean I think you're bringing up a broader thing which is a great conversation as well. So when this does get broken, do we just accept that for existing content and don't change it? Do we fix the existing content, whatever that means, because everything kind of falls apart because all the links are based on digests? Or can new content be start being pushed within three days? And what is the expectation of registries that you know implement the spec? Um, yeah. Does that break the 256 character limit that we have on things? I, can't, I think that's on repos. I don't know if it includes the tag. Um, one, one thing that, it, one thing that I, I think in my mind, all existing content stays there, like addressable, and everything should, you know, capital letters should migrate to something else like Prop 12, or otherwise it's not currently broken. Um, and those things could even be effectively interchangeable if you might have like a from, you know, like one of the layers in the stack is in a SHA-256 and then the thing you just built on top that has changed since this event. Right. Your Debian yeah, image is 256, but your new image is 512. For at least a couple of weeks, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, uh, doing a spike like that should work. And I feel like people have already done that. I have not. Um, but people even on this call probably have done what would that look like with a different checksum than shop 256. Um, how to give a warning of like, hey, you're still using shop 256 to be just like guidance for you know, different implementations. Um, there's something I, think that I guess I was thinking, is there a, 
you know, something to do with the conformance <laughs> tests. Could, could, a, could this be done in the conformance test? Is do you support 512? Um, and, you know, just, uh, I'm just brainstorming ideas. I think targeting 512 is even a mis like targeting a single thing is wrong. If if we're going to do the work of getting to another digest like format, we should do something like more extensible. It, it, for for uh, conformance tests, I, I think I would accept it as a conformance test to say I support MD5, which is worse, which is like the wrong direction. But at least it proves it's not as a as a guidance for what you should use instead. It's Look at how flexible we are. We can even support Rob thirteen, um, something even even worse. Um, anyway, Brandon has his hand up. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, I don't think we can do Rob thirteen because that wouldn't be a bounded length. But uh, going on in, in general, I think <laughs> I think the one question I have is what this looks like in a transition state, um, and maybe that's in there. And I don't think we would be able to answer that in five minutes. But just in general, something to think about is if you have older clients doing the push, or maybe you have a newer client doing the push and an older client doing the pull, you know, because of the content addressable store, it's that digest has to match whatever they're seeing. If it's an older client doesn't know about the, about the encoding happening on the fly. And so those are the scenarios that I'd like to see fleshed out. Um, so I actually, I think I want to say me and Jason talked about this um, but basically one of the things with conformance tests and distribution is they're pulling an image spec library. So the, the writing of the spec is saying you just need some document that references the blobs. So I'm not even talking about going away from uh, SHA-256, but I was considering like just as a proof of concept writing like a YAML based uh, registry that just converts in and out of YAML. And then we could provide to the conformance test, like here's my manifest and descriptors and they're actually YAML and you throw it against the registry and it works given that new, because then if you introduce a new image spec, uh, manifest type or any of these new things like, uh, refers, then the test would be extensible enough to like, you just pass it a bunch of, blobs and then those somehow get templated into these new things does that does that make any sense maybe not i think it's a different dimension of different of changes we might want to consider not that i would advocate yaml specifically but blobs should be able to take anything and be content addressed currently there's only one way to content address them practically and it's SHA-256, but extending that to other things could be useful. Uh, I know we only have a few more minutes, but uh, I wanted to, Sargon also has his hand up, sorry. Yeah, my, uh, I would love for this to be clarified because I asked this question a long time ago, which is if we ever wanna mix hash algorithms in the uh, pull process. So let's say a tag points to a um, SHA-256 manifest that then points to uh, MD5 blobs, is that legal? If some blobs are MD5 and some blobs are, are MD4, is that legal? Like none of this, as far as I know, is ratified in the spec. Uh, this isn't an improvement, but this is just a clarification that I think would be really wonderful to add. I think it should be because each one of those requests is a separate API call for each individual blob. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think practically speaking, so so I agree with you that I think it's not defined and therefore is probably allowed. Uh, but practically speaking, what a monstrous registry to do that to you. But um, like in a manifest, could you mix and match different? Should I, you should we make that not a thing? Maybe. Oh, I, I think I, I, uh, I think I, I think, think it, it should be possible. I think it should be possible, right? Okay. Then should we? What, okay, because we... because what if you what if you were building something on you know, you know Debian base and it was published as SHA-256 or in the future pop club or whatever they want to standardize on. And then you on the top are ex exclusively using blank to be, and your layers would be, you have a mix, a heterogeneous set of hashes. Should we make this ratified somewhere? Please. Uh, image spec? 
Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, uh, I, 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 I think, think, I think this is people. one that would need both. Because, like you said, it's a different API call. So yeah, having a bit of verbiage around those things, the fact that you might have to manifest that effectively is calling everyone to pass is fine. But then for whatever manifests type, you know, that are getting pushed to the distribution, then it would, I think it would be in both distribution and image spec. I think it's fine to put it in the in the specs to mention it in the specs. I think it might confuse people because practically it doesn't happen. Like you, you would never see this. It, it's more of a like uh, you know educational oddity. For instance, you could have two different types of digest, but in practicality, a hundred percent of registries only support two fifty six. Um, I got to drop for another thing, but plus one to Vincent's focus. The the image specification does not say that it, you can't mix, nor does it say you can, but it does say that you there's a, a format. I'll link it here. Yeah. So even just having examples in there, but yeah. All right. See you folks. Have a good week. Thanks, everyone.